Hey everyone and welcome back. This is going to be the small bonus video that I mentioned previously where we'll be creating the curvature to the material so that by the end of the video we have something that looks a little bit like this in the background. So you'll notice there are definitely some kind of visual issues going on here. Uh, mostly that things look so they're popping in night and most of that will be overcome with the use of your own uh, static meshes. I think these are basically just a little bit too rudimentary um, and also the offsets and things can be a little bit uh, harsh for the material to work with but generally this, the material should be fine. It's going to be the assets you're working with which make the difference. By the end of this you'll see that all we're really doing is we're offsetting the vertices in the material so it's not actually deforming anything physically on the mesh. Uh, it's all kind of illusionary. So to get started on this, one thing I wanted to mention before we do actually start making the material is that if I go to my models folder, I've recreated the cube. Uh, because this is distorting the vertices, basically the higher poly count your meshes are, the better this is going to work because it will have more uh, verts to deform. Uh, it's not actually completely required. You can still follow this with the very basic uh, planar cube that you get. But this is what mine looks like now. So if I put the wireframe on, you can see I've just gone in and added some subdivides to the cube. So each one's got, it's going to have 16 faces per side of the cube. So it's just got a little bit more detail and information. Generally, like I said, you probably won't end up working with cubes in your project anyway. Uh, this is just for me to get the tutorial across when you're working with meshes with some detail and uh, which actually have some shape to them then they're probably going to have enough verts anyway so you don't need to add these in unless you start seeing some problems so it doesn't mean that you're going to have a really high poly count just to get this working so just to let you know and again uh, i'll provide the download for this in this video so if you did want to work with the cube that i have i'm not going to go through the modeling process of that but you can just download my project uh, take that out and you'll have the cube with a bit more information so what we are going to do to get this working is we're going to go back to the materials folder and i'm just going to add this into the flat material rather than creating a whole new curved material this does mean as well that the materials that we have in the game already will just work because they're instances of the flat material that we already have created so inside of the flat material uh, this is the bit we're going to be interested in which is the world position offset and this is actually quite a simple thing to do so first thing is we're going to get the world position of the object and a lot of this I'll kind of just go through and then go back over what we're changing after we've implemented it just to save it a little bit of time and hopefully it's going to make more more sense uh, when we have everything on screen ready to discuss. So just follow along for a little while. Uh, we were then once we have the world position, we want to get the distance between uh, the ourselves and the camera. So we want the utility distance function and then of course we're going to get the camera position and we'll have two options they're the same and we just want the camera position world space. So that bit's quite obvious what we're doing here. And then we want to divide this by a variable that we're going to control. So we'll get a divide and we will, uh, if we just press S and click in the graph, this is going to give us a scalar parameter. This is just something that we can change. I'm going to call this the distance. So this should be the distance which we will have an override for that we will be able to uh, control in the distance which the curve will appear. So we'll plug that into B. And then we just want to get the power of this. So again, we can pull up and uh, search power. And with that, again, we want another scalar parameter. So I'm just going to copy this one. We'll plug this in to the exponential value. And uh, in fact, we can just call this one exponential or EXP, just so that we know what this is um, overriding again in the material instance, which is going to be the, uh, the exponent of the power value that we have here. And then finally, we want to select M and again, left click on the graph. This is just a quick way to get the multiply node. We can plug this in here and we're going to plug the final value here into the world position. So there's one more thing that we want to do and that is to get the B value of what we're multiplying here. And this is just going to be the cross value of a direction, which again, I'll explain in a bit how we're going to work that. But first of all, if we get the cross, so the uh, cross product here, um, the thing that we want to get first of all to plug into the A parameter is going to be the camera direction vector. And of course, if you did want any more information on these, I, I'm not going to explain all of these different nodes in depth, but you can just hover over these and it gives you a very brief description of what they are. If you needed more information, of course, you can go to the documentation. But the main thing is just to see how these values are going together to give us the curve effect that we want. Um, and the final thing, like I said, is we, we want this to be offset by a direction. Now, I've seen a lot of people when they're making this type of thing, which will just you will just leave this as a kind of standard vector three. They'll plug that in and then hard set the value here. Now this value is the one which is actually controlling the direction in which the curve is going. Um, so rather than just leaving this by default, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to 
press V and left click, which will give us a vector parameter or a uh, scalar parameter with the vector three uh, values. And this will let us actually manipulate the direction of the curve in the instance of the uh, the material as well, which is really useful. And I'm gonna call this one direction. Okay, so just notice I said one direction in my video, which is something I never wanted to say, but uh, we'll leave that one in. And with that, so we're gonna plug the direction into the B value, which is um, going against the cross product of the camera direction value. And that is everything to get this working. So what we have here, uh, we have the distance in which the fall off is going to happen. So we want to give this a base value as well. Uh, I think I found something of around 800 works perfectly fine. Uh, we then have the exponent value that we're plugging into the power. Now this is gonna be a lot smaller, so we can leave this something as five for now. And of course, we're gonna be able to override this in the uh, material instance anyway. Now the confusing thing is how we use a color to get the direction. So just to give a simple example, I'm gonna put the blue value to something like 0.3, and I think that this should make it go either left or right, probably left. Um, <laughs> I'm not incredibly experienced with materials, but um, in my mind that's how it works. And we'll see this when we put it on the, uh, on the meshes anyway. So if we apply that, we can now go back in, we can press play, uh, and we're gonna to need to let the shaders recompile, so I'll do that. Okay, so with that compiled, the map now, or the, the road, should look something like this. So it is curving to the left, just as I thought it would. So the curve is now working. Uh, and I just wanted to mention as well that I'm actually picking this recording up several days after I started recording. I got interrupted, and I just haven't had the time to finish it off. So apologies if the sound suddenly starts sounding different, or the quality's off or something, um, or the background noise, etc. It's just a completely different day but uh, we'll pick up where it was. So with the curve material now working, uh, this is going to present a few different issues. And I'm just gonna show you how we can fix these. So the first thing I wanted to highlight is because we have this as our base material, the M flat, uh, all of these are gonna now be implementing the direction, the distance and the, uh, the exponent. Now, if you have any of these ticked and you update these individually, obviously that's gonna be perfectly uh, fine for the objects which you're using that material. But of course, if you then run this, it's only gonna be that one instanced material which has that effect. So if we just do the um, black material, we can see we get weird things happening with the obstacles because their curve values and everything is completely dif different from everything else and from the parent. So what I'd recommend is to revert any of these back if you have these changed and make sure you leave these unticked just so that this is being derived from the parent material and we're going to make a quick fix to uh, solve this. So what I want to do, I'm just going to use the mi underscore flat black. I'll leave the names as they are because um, obviously they're not technically flat anymore, but the naming convention will still work perfectly fine. So this is still gonna be our M underscore um, base material. So in fact, I am just gonna rename this very quickly. I'm gonna call this M underscore base, so we know what this is. Uh, we'll leave the rest with the, the flat in the name, that's perfectly fine. Now with that change made, I just want to duplicate the flat black, and I'm just gonna call this one MI underscore curve base. So this will be the material, which we will actually be controlling the global curvature and the distance and everything like that on. So for this to work, all we need to do is we're gonna come into all of our other materials. So everything that we haven't just copied, we're gonna open these by just hitting enter and we're gonna go into these and just change the parent material down here from the base to be the MI underscore curve base. And we'll just do that for each of these materials. So it's gonna be a nice quick fix. And with that done, if we just make sure that everything's saved, what this means we can do, you've probably guessed this already, but we're just going to come into the mi underscore curve base. And now say that we wanted to change the distance to be something a lot smaller. We can lower that down. Of course, this is gonna filter down as long as you haven't got these ticked. So again, make sure that the exponent and the distance rule unticked on the child classes or the child materials. Uh, because as long as you haven't got this ticked, then this will filter through to all of the materials which inherit these values. And now if we press play, we can see we've got a very, very much extended curve, but all of the objects have that same curvature. So like I said, I think a value of about 800 works quite well on this. Uh, the exponent, we can change that as well if we wanted to. So something like six or seven can work quite well to like really emphasize that curvature as well. Um, but obviously keeping the distance the same, you can see you're gonna to have to play about with the different values to try and make sure that based on where the camera's looking and everything, that everything's uh, not popping in 
and looking a bit strange. And then the final thing is going to be the direction. So like I said, that did work. The uh, the point three on the blue is obviously controlling the X. So that's going to be the, the X axis on the way that that's distorting it. And then the other cool thing about this is now that we have all of this uh, collapsed into the MI underscore curved base, uh, we can close all of the others. So I'm just going to drag this across, close tabs to the right. And we can now, in fact, I'm just going to drag this down as well. Uh, we can enter the play mode and we can start tweaking things uh, in real time. So we can actually make the changes here. And once we let go, we can see that we are actually having the, uh, the visual updates made. So this is going to be really handy as well to kind of make sense of how we're using color so that we can start moving the values and seeing how they are emphasizing different directions and things like that. So if we wanted things to be going to the, uh, the right rather than the left, then we need to make this the minus value. Uh, likewise, we're going to have to drop the green value down if we wanted the kind of um, horizon based curve and things like that. And then of course, if we press play uh, or if we save this and uh, come back in and press play, then we will have our changes saved. And this is going to be the, the proper curve material in motion. So hopefully you can see how uh, that, that's all working. I didn't mean to go too fast there. It was just reparenting the material really so that we can control specifically the curve and all of the values related to that in one place. Because of course, that's one of the things, um, although the great thing about material instances is having that flexibility and freedom to change anything within the material. Things like that because you're going to have the kind of faking of where the vertices are. You kind of want everything most of the time for most use cases, at least to be using the same values. So just making that another kind of parent material class and then having everything derive off of that so that we can just edit these values once seemed like the better approach. So with that done, like I said, this was kind of more of a bonus video. Um, I kind of forgot to upload this one or create this one originally. And again, a big thank you to the creator of the plugin that I've mentioned before for the Endless Runner, which is on the marketplace. As I mentioned at the beginning, this wasn't something I was going to do with the curved shader, but that was included in the pack that they gave me, which is super useful. So I've kind of added some additions to that material, taken reference from that. And this is what we've got now with uh, our very flexible kind of curved material shader. And like I've mentioned, uh, this is looking a little bit ropey at the moment, but if you start adding in some materials with a lot more uh, detail to them, a lot more vertices, it doesn't necessarily have to be like excessively high poly, but just something more than a cube, then a lot of this is a lot less noticeable just because it's got more information to deform and warp out of play. Um, as it is, I think for cubes, this is looking pretty cool. It's what you'd expect. So I'm going to leave that one here. Uh, if I haven't already, then I will definitely be leaving the link to download the entire complete project in the description below, completely free of charge. So do help yourself to that if you wanted to pick through things, just to recap how I've done things or pull any of the particle effects and stuff. I'll be uploading that as soon as possible. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.